Well, if there's like Look at that thing. It's rotating. Strange objects have been seen. Unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, have captured the imagination of Americans for decades. But much of the conversation around UFOs has been confined to science fiction movies and novels, such as the 1982 hit E.T. In the absence of government commentary on the topic, conspiracy theories around the U.S. concealing alien life and technology in secret compounds like Area 51 have run rampant. In fact, a 2019 poll found that 68% of respondents believed the U.S. government knows more about UFOs than it's telling us. Earlier this year, conversation around UFOs reached a fever pitch after the U.S. military shot down several unidentified objects in a matter of days. It has happened again for the third day in a row and the fourth time in just nine days, the United States has shot down an unidentified high-flying object. One of the objects was later identified as a Chinese spy balloon. The rest, President Biden has said, are likely objects tied to private companies, recreation, or research institutions. In an attempt to be more transparent and address potential national security questions, the government has taken up the charge to publicize and legitimize the study of unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAPs, as the military has rebranded UFOs. Today is the first hearing of its kind where we will attempt to get down to the bottom of what is actually happening with UAPs. We want to shift the conversation about UAPs from sensationalism yeah. to science. A 2022 UAP report published by U.S. intelligence stated that 195 of the incidents the office had examined could be attributed to ordinary explanations, like drones, balloons, and other objects, including birds. However, another 171 incidents were labeled as uncharacterized, with some appearing to have demonstrated unusual flight characteristics or performance capabilities that require further analysis. We experienced was like I said, well beyond the material science and the capabilities that we had at the time that we have currently or that we're going to have in the next 10 to 20 years. I think they have started to recognize that we should actually have the ability to report these objects, not because we're out there doing some type of UFO hunt, but because it's a matter of national security and domain awareness that the tactical air crew in, in this country understand what's in front of their aircraft. Here is another UFO bulletin. The Defense Department has just announced that the unidentified flying object has suddenly disappeared from our radar screen. The military defines UAPs as unidentifiable objects that travel in the air or water, as well as transmedium objects that can transition between space and the atmosphere or between the atmosphere and bodies of water. Sightings of unidentifiable objects have been reported all over the world. Hotspots include the Middle East, the coasts off of China and Korea, and along both coasts of the U.S. Such objects are usually described as round in shape, white, silver, or translucent in color, and with no thermal exhaust for propulsion. Investigation into UFOs in the United States can be traced as far back as the late 1940s. Project Blue Book, which ran until 1969, recorded over 12,000 sightings. Out of those, over 700 remain unidentified. If we just take a minute to go back to the origin story of UFOs, which is Roswell, 1947. It was learned after the fact that that metallic deflated object that was found in a field by a, by a rancher and his son was a government surveillance balloon designed to look for Soviet uh, non-compliance with nuclear arms control that was in place after Second World War. And the government didn't want that program public. And so a military spokesman actually spoke to the local press and used the phrase flying saucer, and then you're off to the races. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. The U.S. is not the only country to take UFOs seriously. A number of South American nations, including Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, and Peru, all have government programs that study and investigate UFO activity. In France, the French Space Agency has been studying UFOs since 1977. The modern era of UFOs being in the news pretty much started in 2017 when the New York Times leaked and then the Defense Department admitted to them these three Navy videos that were quite striking, showing objects 
moving apparently at very fast speeds and in erratic ways that the pilots didn't understand. And, and that sort of opened up the box, if you like. And then the government had to take it seriously. The article brought to light the existence of a shadowy $22 million UAP program known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program that the Pentagon had funded from 2007 to 2012. Public discourse around the topic reignited. In response to mounting public pressure, a flurry of government activity over the last few years has been aimed at demystifying UAPs. In June of 2021, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a preliminary report on UAPs. This was followed in November by the Pentagon establishing a group to identify and track objects in restricted airspace. Then in June of 2022, NASA convened an independent expert panel to help study UAP incidents and advise the DOD on how to gather and interpret data on UAPs. The following month, the DOD established the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, to synchronize efforts across DOD and other federal agencies in detecting and investigating UAP sightings. Meanwhile, Congress has sought its own answers. During a July hearing, Congress heard testimony from three former military officials about their experience with UAPs. My testimony is based on information I've been given by individuals with a long-standing track record of legitimacy and service to this country. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. Uh, to which I was denied access to those additional read-ons when I uh, requested it. Grush went on to say that he had interviewed individuals who had recovered non-human biologics from crashed UAPs. The Pentagon has denied such claims. Experts are also wary. I'm not going to attribute bad intentions to David Grush, but it was anecdotal. I mean, if you looked at his actual statement, he was talking about someone he knew who told him that this existed. It was second hand, so however dramatic it was, it's not going to be persuasive. Former Navy pilot Ryan Graves also testified. Here he is talking about an incident he experienced in 2014 near Virginia Beach. After upgrades were made to our jet's radar systems, we began detecting unknown objects operating in our airspace. At first, we assumed they were radar errors, but soon we began to correlate the radar tracks with multiple onboard sensors, including infrared systems, and eventually through visual ID. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned to base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that aircrew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. CNBC spoke with Graves, who is the executive director of Americans for Safe Aerospace, a nonprofit organization dedicated to aerospace safety and national security with a focus on UAPs. Though initially conceived as a tool to educate the public and Congress on UAPs, the organization's function has expanded. We weren't expecting to fill the role of information receiving organization, you could say. Uh, but once we stood up, we received a lot of contact from commercial pilots as well as other veterans that have had some type of uh, experience in their professional duties that they want to share. And so at safeaerospace.org, pilots and others can go, they can submit their experiences. And we have relationships on Capitol Hill as well as in the Pentagon where we can bring these cases for further investigation across official channels. The DOD now has its own website to publicly share declassified information and videos of UAPs. The website will also eventually allow current and former U.S. government employees, service members, and contractors to submit reports regarding UAPs directly to Aero. The DOD plans to open the reporting mechanism to the public as well. While further study of UAPs is necessary for both matters of national security, as well as the advancement of science, Experts say it's going to be a difficult undertaking. I'm not sure the government <laughs> has figured out a way to deal with the potential fire hose of, you know, 300 million Americans reporting strange things they see in the sky. And the reporting rate and the number of incidents will go up dramatically because everyone's heightened awareness of this issue. We already know that most UFO sightings 
and this is well documented, represent atmospheric or or astronomical phenomena, the planet Venus, meteors, fireballs, weather balloons, make a list. They're not exceptional, they're not strange, and you don't really want to be inundated with that. Another obstacle that the government and those trying to study unidentified objects face is combating the stigma associated with UFOs. Been kind of ingratiated into the little green man and UFO conversation due to media and whatnot for quite a while. Um, and it's, you know, it's turned into an entertainment topic for the most part. During his testimony, David Grush said that he had been persecuted for his reporting of UAP incidents. It was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. NASA has said that the scientists it tasked with studying UAPs also faced harassment. Not only were some of the, the things that our panel members received during the course of this study simple trolling, some of them actually ro rose to, to actual threats. As for a connection between aliens and UAPs, both the military and NASA have said that they have found no evidence to suggest a link. But the possibility can't be completely discounted. If you ask me, do I believe there's life in a universe that is so vast that it's hard for me to comprehend how big it is? My personal answer is yes. It's hard for me to imagine that we're completely alone in this universe, and that's part of the difficulty in this conversation. It's, it's hard to deal with an unknown when we have such little information, and it's why gathering new information is just so important right now. NASA says one of the biggest issues with UAP research right now is lack of quality data. While there are numerous eyewitness accounts and visuals associated with UAP, they're not consistent, they're not detailed, and they're not curated observations that can be used to make definitive scientific conclusions about the nature and the origin of UAP. To tackle this issue, the organization plans to use its own highly calibrated instruments to gather more detailed data. NASA also plans to utilize AI and machine learning to search the skies for anomalies. The public can also help. There's a wealth of data that a cell phone takes, and you can imagine designing apps that make the images uh, relatively tamper-free. And I think if we have a collection where interesting events are collected by citizens, uh, hosted, and you have multiple images of the same event, we will be able to learn a lot. In the meantime, we may just have to be patient. I suggest that people, the media as well, just be uncomfortable with the uncertainty for a while. Anomalies in the history of science often tell you something very important, that your theories are incomplete or there's some whole new world of, of uh, reality that you haven't understood. And I think, you know, scientists being open-minded have to acknowledge that that may be the case with this phenomena too. It's a small subset. It doesn't matter if it's only one or two. If there's some genuinely new phenomena there, let's find out what it is. Let's figure it out.